Hi everyone, welcome back, hope you're doing well. I'm gonna review all of the makeup that I've bought this year so far. I've got it all behind me here. I haven't counted how many items there are, but there's more than I thought there would be. So instead of just talking through these makeup items, I thought it would be interesting to put them on whilst I do so. So that is why I'm coming to you makeup free today. My cheeks are a little bit pink. I'm a little bit hot at the moment, so hopefully that will kind of calm down. So I've got enough items to do a full face apart from eyeshadow. So yeah, quite a few items to talk about. So I'm just gonna get straight into it because I've got a feeling this might be a bit of a long video. Okay, I've put this on my hair to keep my hair off my face and I've zoomed you in a little bit as well so you can see a little bit closer the makeup. Now I've got a primer to start things off with. This is the NYX Plump Right Back Primer. I'm gonna do two pumps of this and I feel like two pumps is better than one pump. One pump isn't quite enough to do my entire face. I bought this as a replacement for Bobbi Brown face base, which I love, but it's pricey and I wasn't feeling like splurging. So I kind of Googled the best hydrating primers and this one was mentioned and I think it does a pretty good job. Now it's not as good as Bobbi Brown face base. This isn't quite as hydrating. So Bobbi Brown, I feel like is a, a more hydrating cream and my makeup sits a bit better on top of that. However, if you're on a budget, this one is a good option. It does make my makeup look nice. It is hydrating. It's a little bit sticky, a little bit tacky. So that's good for your makeup kind of sticking on top of it or adhering on top of it. So I quite like this one. I would repurchase this one, but it doesn't quite beat Bobbi Brown. I have another primer-like product. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. So this is a little bit like a hybrid product. You can apply it as a primer before your foundation goes on top. You can mix it into your foundation. You can use it as like a liquid highlighter, or you can apply it all over your face as a standalone product with nothing on over the top if you just want a little bit of glow. Now, this product was absolutely raved about. And to be honest with you, I, it's okay. I don't really feel like it adds loads to my sort of makeup routine. I'm just gonna apply it on my cheekbones and sort of blend it in with my fingers. Also look at how my nail varnish has chipped. I've only had this on for two days. So it's, it is nice, it does provide a nice little bit of glow but I'm not wowed by it and I am glad that I only bought the mini. If I'd have splurged on the full size product, I think I would have felt a bit, a bit kind of stuck with the product I suppose, not really knowing what's best to do with it. So I feel like the mini is giving me enough of the product to try it out, see what I think about it. And I'm kind of glad that I don't have to use up a full size product with this. So it's a nice little glow, but I kind of feel like it, when I put foundation over the top, this is just gonna disappear. So not a product that I'm in a rush to repurchase, but I still feel like it's one that I need to keep using to get more of an opinion on. Okay, I've just put a bit of my Bobbi Brown corrector under my eyes. So foundation next, and I've bought two this year. I've bought the Yves Saint Laurent Touche Eclair foundation, which I bought because I had really fond memories of this foundation. I bought this, we're talking over 10 years ago now, and I remember it being an excellent foundation. Can't really remember what were the reasonings behind that, whether it you know, was easy to blend or it lasted for a long time. I can't remember the details, but I just remember really, really enjoying it. And I got this on a really good discount recently. I like it, <laughs> I think it's a really nice foundation, but I'm not as wowed by it as I seem to have been in the past. However, this is my newest foundation. I've only used it a handful of times, so I don't have a huge opinion of it yet. It is in my shop, my stash, so hopefully by the end of the month, I would have used it enough times to get more of an opinion of it. So for now, it's, it's okay, it's good, it's a nice foundation, but I'm just not as wowed by it as I used to be. So the foundation I'm dotting on now is the other one that I bought this year, the second one, and this is NARS Sheer Glow. And prior to owning this foundation, I had never tried a NARS foundation. And I'd seen so many good reviews, so many videos of Sheer Glow that I caved this year and bought it. I'd used up a lot of my foundations that were in my inventory and that's why I hadn't really kind of bought a new foundation for a good year or two. And I'm so glad that this was the first one that I tried because this is absolutely beautiful. Now I usually apply it with 
a damp beauty sponge. I don't often go for a brush and that's just because I find that it's just a lot easier to use a beauty blender. But for this, you can use a brush, you can use your beauty blender, you can use your fingers. It's a really easy formula to work with. Blends in really well. Colour match for me is really good as well. This is in Deville. And it's a really nice medium finish foundation. It gives you a little bit of glow. Now, from the title, I did originally think this is going to be more of like a tinted serum or a BB consistency, a sheer glow. But actually, it is more of a medium finish foundation. And you have a bit of glow, a bit of a healthy glow, which I quite like. I don't like juminess, but I like a glow. And I think this foundation is just really, really pretty. Easy to blend, good colour match long lasting this is going to be on my face all day it doesn't cling to any like texture or dryness it doesn't highlight my pores either also doesn't look too heavy and too cakey just a really beautiful foundation i'm so glad i've purchased this and i am tempted to try a couple more nars foundations as well and see how they compare to this one I purchased two concealers this year. I got the Vive Modern Radiance Concealer and I also got a mini of the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer as well. Hadn't tried this NARS one before so I really wanted to try it because it's really highly raved about. Sorry, my cat's in the wardrobe, I don't know what he's doing. But yeah, I bought both of these. Unfortunately, I've not used either of these enough times yet to really have too much of an opinion. However, the NARS one is in my current shop, my stash, so again, hopefully by the end of the month, I'd have more of an opinion. I think from what I kind of heard that NARS is a bit more full coverage. So based on that, I'm just gonna put some of that underneath my eyes. I've got this in the shade Madeline. And the Vive one I've got in light three. I'm just gonna put a bit over this redness. I was hoping my rosy cheeks would go down a little bit, but it hasn't yet. Now, from my initial thoughts on these two concealers, the Vive one is easier to blend. They're both easy to blend, but the Vive one just blends super quickly. But I put up a video a couple of weeks ago where I was trying new makeup and I put one concealer under one eye and the other concealer under the other eye. And the Vive one just blended out like instantaneously. It was so super quick to blend out. Not saying the NARS one isn't. I mean, even using a concealer brush, which I usually hate using, I just couldn't be bothered to wet a beauty sponge. It's blending out really well. Again, not like clinging to any texture. A really nice, easy concealer to use. And provides a good amount of coverage as well. This Vive one, I mean, did you see that? Did you see how quickly that Vive one was to blend out? Really, really quick. Yeah, unfortunately, because my focus with concealers at the moment are the two in my project pan, I'm not really able to explore these too much at the moment or as much as I would have liked, but I'll be done with those concealers by the end of the year and then I can focus on these two and my Too Faced Born This Way one. Okay, next purchase was also from Vive and it was the Dimension Face Palette and I got this one in the shade Dawn and this is a limited edition product and I just loved the colour story in this palette, I couldn't resist. Not usually a face palette person, I like to buy these products separately, but I just thought they all work together so well, and I love the formulation of the Vive bronzers and blushes. Now in this palette, I'm just gonna use the bronzer because I do have a couple of blushes and also a highlighter to talk about. But the formulation of the Vive bronzers and blushes are just so buttery so easy to work with they blend really well and they're not super pigmented where you just need to dip once and you've got a load of product you can build up the intensity really quite well so they're i suppose beginner friendly or if you're a bit like me you're not very good at doing your makeup they're they're quite forgiving and i don't feel like this bronzer is really orange or really dark it's a good tone of bronze for me and my skin tone. I've got two new blushes this year. The first one is a mini Rare Beauty one. I got this in a set with a few other Rare Beauty products. I love these blushes in terms of the ease of application. They're a liquid blush, so you just dot one dot onto your cheeks, and then you blend out. Super pigmented, so a little goes a long way with these. 
However, I've got this in the colour Joy and I think it's just a touch too vibrant for me. I like that it's a coral, but if it was a bit more of a toned down coral, I would wear this a lot more often than I have been wearing it. I think this is probably better suited to the spring and summer months rather than this time of year. So not really getting a load of use out of it now, but I probably will do once the weather picks up in, you know, six months time. And also don't be put off by the fact as well that this is a mini because you only need a dot you're gonna get through this so incredibly slowly. So I don't think I would really ever be interested in buying a full size product like this from Rare Beauty just because I know I'm not gonna be able to use it all up. I think it's gonna take me years to even use up this mini one. So the blusher I'm gonna be applying is from Stila and this is the convertible color dual lip and cheek in the shade Lilium. I love this, I am so super happy I bought this. And I bought this because I loved Daphne's makeup in Bridgerton. That was just one dab in the product by the way. I loved that it was really natural. It was a barely there makeup. It was all about sort of healthy skin and just accenting, highlighting her features rather than putting makeup on over the top if that makes sense. And I googled what products they used and this was the blusher that they used in this exact colour and I think I noticed this at 20 or 25% off and I pounced. I bought it and I'm so happy that I did because it's such a juicy formulation. It's really easy to work with as well, what, what with it being a cream product, but it's super concentrated. Now I just did one tap in there and I've got enough for both cheeks. So again, this is a little goes a long way type of product gonna last me absolutely ages. It's a cute little compact as well, you have a mirror in there so this is quite handy for travel. It's very thin so it's not gonna take up a load of space and I just love how it looks. I love how my cheeks are a bit kind of like juicy, a bit dewy, a bit fresh. It's not as heavy like a powder can sometimes be so I love this product. Kind of interested to try a couple of other colours from the range as well but I know that blushes are really hard to pan, it takes a long time to use up a blusher so I'm trying to kind of hold off for now. Next product is a highlighter, this is from Rare Beauty and this is also a mini and this is in the shade Mesmerise. Again like with the blushes I love this formulation, I love how easy it is to use but if I'm being really critical I think this is the wrong shade for me. This is more of like an icy pink. If I'm going to go for a highlighter, I'm going to go for like a yellow gold, not a shade like this, which is a bit cool. But it is very easy to use and you can get away with using more of this compared to the blusher. I used three dots of this, whereas with the blusher, I would only use one. Just dot it onto your cheekbones and then I just blend it out the finger, but you can use a brush or a beauty sponge. It is a very pretty product but I personally wouldn't be interested in buying any more of these and that's just because I'm not really a highlighter fan. But if you are and you like the effect of a liquid or a cream highlighter compared to a powder one, I would definitely recommend these and also because it's the mini as well it is going to last you a really long time. I don't have anything new for eyeshadow so I just put on some of my NYX eyeshadow base and MAC Shroom eyeshadow that's in my project pan. Next is eyeliners. I've got a couple to talk about. The one I'm going to apply is the Ico Black Magic Coco Edit Liquid Eyeliner. And I'm pretty sure I got this this year, but I think it was right at the beginning of the, of the year because it was part of the Boxing Day sales. It's a mini and I got this along with a brown mascara as well. And I just wanted to get a brown liquid liner because I felt like black was too harsh. I've now decluttered my black liquid liner, so this is the only one I've got. And this is just really nice to provide a little bit of definition, but it's nothing too harsh like a black is. Brown is a lot softer. And this is a really easy pen to work with. It's a pen liquid liner, it's not a pot. It's really pigmented, so you get a good amount of coverage on your eyes really easy to work with. I just did a little flick because I'm not too good at doing a winged eyeliner but I just love that it's really soft and it's also really quick and easy to use as well so if I'm in a rush of the morning and I want a little bit of a liner on my top lid I can use this and I know that it's not going to transfer as well 
stays put all day long really like this would definitely repurchase this once this runs out however there's still loads left and it's a mini and i've had it for nearly a year so a great purchase the next eyeliner is a pencil liner and it's a duo by charlotte tilbury and this is the color magic liner duo and i got this in the shade mesmerizing maroon because this is a shade recommended for green eyes one side you have a matte purple very beautiful shade this is nice if i want more of like a vampy eyeliner look and then the other side is a shimmer and this is a rose gold so it's slightly lighter and it's nice to have the two different colours so you can wear them both together in one look you can wear one or the other and these are really easy to apply they're a very creamy formulation so it's easy to draw it on your upper lid i have a mac one that i'm panning and i have to really kind of press down and do lots of little like strokes with this i can literally just draw it on my eye so very easy to use very creamy but it stays put as well you have a little bit of playtime with it if you want to smudge it out with a brush and then it sets and it stays all day this is currently in my shop my stash because i like to go for a bit more of like a vampy makeup look in november so i'm actually using the purple side more than the pink side i think the pink side would get a bit more love in like february and march when i like to go for a little bit more pinky makeup rather than purple but a good purchase i am glad i've bought this however i don't use it that often but the formulation of Charlotte Tilbury eyeliners are brilliant. Okay, to finish off the eyes, I've got a mascara. This is the Clinique Lash Power Mascara, and I've got this in the shade Dark Chocolate. And this year, I've made the transition from both a black to brown mascara, but also from a standard formulation to a tubing mascara. Now, I have obviously a pale complexion I've got a warm complexion as well and based on that I find that brown mascara brown eyeliner is a lot more flattering in comparison to black so I no longer wear black eyeliner I no longer wear black mascara I go for brown options and I find that they still provide enough definition but without being really harsh and really contrasting. So whenever I buy mascara now, I try to buy a brown one. I also try to buy a tubing one as well. Now, the tubing mascaras are a lot better in terms of staying put. They're not gonna smudge underneath your eyes. And I used to get really fed up of applying a mascara and then an hour later it would be smudged underneath my eyes. And I've tried a few tubing mascaras now, and I don't get that problem anymore. However, this mascara is the best one I have tried so far, because it's really easy to build up. You're not going to get really spidery lashes. You're going to get a bit of clumpiness. I don't mind that. I don't mind a clumpy lash. But you're also going to get definition. You're going to get a little bit of curl. And this stays put as well. This does not smudge or flake on me at all. And it's really easy to remove at the end of the day as well. I wash my face and then I get the water on my ring finger and just sort of swirl it around my eyelashes and then you get the clumps coming off them. And I would definitely repurchase this mascara. I think it's really, really lovely. It's not a solid 10 out of 10 because I do feel like I need a bit more lift, a bit more curl with my lashes because they are quite straight. However, the problem with going for brown tubing mascaras now is that your pool of mascaras is drastically a lot smaller there's not as many tubing mascaras to choose from and then when they are tubing they don't always offer a brown version so i would really like to try the victoria becker mascara but it's black <laughs> so if anybody has any suggestions for a brown tubing mascara please let me know however i would repurchase this one but i'm just interested in trying others a product that i've bought before is nyx microbrow in the shade taupe which is what i'm using now so this is a makeup purchase from this year but it's one that I've kind of used a couple of before in the past I like that it's a really fine pencil it's a fine applicator so you can be quite precise with it as well you can be quite light-handed as well you don't need to like dig into your brows to get the pigment out really easy to use it's a twist up as well so you're not wasting any product by sharpening a pencil good price point and just makes doing my brows really easy not really a lot I can say about this product that I haven't said before in the past when I've owned it and the fact that I've 
purchased a few of these before is a good sign. Love this, would definitely repurchase more. Okay, finishing up on lips, and this is where I have bought most products from this year. So most of my makeup purchases this year have been lip products. I have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh my god, seven lip liners to talk about. Um, I'm laughing because whenever I do my makeup inventory update videos I always say that my lip liner collection is too high and then I go and buy seven. Okay, so right, let's start off with the two Vive ones that I bought earlier this year and Vive released some pink lipsticks and I bought two of the lipsticks which I'll talk about in a bit and two of the corresponding lip liners in the shades Stupid Cupid and Bewitched. Stupid Cupid is the third one down here and then Bewitched is below it. Stupid Cupid I don't mind because that's much more of a wearable colour however Bewitched is just far too dark and it is actually purple on me it's not like a berry pink or a dusky pink I think how it was described to be it is straight up purple which is not really my kind of colour on my lips. I like to go for nude colours, not purple. So I would definitely not repurchase Bewitched. I probably wouldn't even repurchase Stupid Cupid because even though it's a wearable colour, it's still not really my colour. The formulation of these, however, are brilliant. They are super creamy, so they're really easy to apply and they last all day as well. So the formulation is brilliant. I can't fault the formulation. It's just the colours. Next I've got four NYX lip liners and I bought these as a cheap alternative to MAC lip liners. Now I love the colour of MAC lip liners, I love the staying power, I just don't like the formulation because I find them quite drying, which is a bit ironic given the next item I'm going to talk about. However, I bought the four NYX lip liners, these are a lot creamier than MAC lip liners, they're a lot easier to apply, great colours and they stay all day as well, so I think in the future I would stick with NYX lip liners and I bought all of these in natural nude everyday type of shades. So I've swatched them here, they, they are these four ones here. You can see that they are all fairly similar to each other but there are some, some differences and these are just perfect natural nude everyday wearable lip colours for me. I love me a nude colour so these will get a lot of love in my collection and they are beautiful really easy to use, glad I bought these, would definitely add to my lip liner collection from NYX. However the one I'm going to wear in today's video is by MAC and given what I've just said about MAC lip liners you probably wouldn't have expected me to buy another one, however I did and I wanted an orange based red and I looked for so many orange based lip liners and I couldn't really find my exact one but MAC had it <laughs> so I thought Okay, let's just go for another MAC lip liner. And this is in the shade Chicory. This is like a terracotta burnt orange, orangey red. And this goes really well with my orange red lipstick. I did used to have Brick, but that was too blue based. So I decluttered it and purchased this one instead. Now I don't know whether it's because this one is new but I find that this one applies better than my other MAC lip liners. It's creamier, not as creamy as NYX or Vive, but creamier than my other MAC ones. So really easy to apply, beautiful colour, I love orange based reds like this even though I'm not a big red lipstick or lip liner wearer. So glad I purchased this and it is a really big lip liner as well so this is going to last me for a good few years. I am going to talk to you with my lip liner like this for a few minutes because why not. The two Vive lipsticks that I mentioned are these in the shades Promise and Cherub's Kiss. So Cherub's Kiss is this pinkier one here, Promise is that one there and I loved the look of Promise however Promise is purple on my lips is a really tricky shade to wear. I have got it in my project pan at the moment and I have worn it in a couple of videos recently but I do find like it is a bit too dark for me. The pigmentation of these lipsticks are brilliant however the formulation is a little bit drying. I do have to add a little bit of lip gloss or a little bit of lip balm on over the top so they're not the most comfortable of lipsticks to wear but they are very easy to apply, super pigmented, last all day but I just wish they were a bit creamier. So. I do kind of regret buying these because they're not my shades. Promise is purple, it's too dark, and Cherub's Kiss is a 
pretty enough pink but it's not really my kind of shade anymore so I wouldn't repurchase these I think if I am going to repurchase any Vive lipsticks it would be Power Suit which is like a burnt orange lovely for October lovely for autumn but Vive lipsticks I think are my least favorite part of the Vive products that they do Another lipstick I got as part of a set of three when I went on holiday and they are by L'Oreal and they are the Colourish lipsticks. This is the only one I've kept though, I've decluttered the other two and this one is in the shade 235 Nude which is this one here. It's a lovely topper but it's also really nice on its own as well. It's just a hint of peachy pink, very natural, very easy to wear, lovely everyday colour and it's nice that it's quite a sheeny soft formulation it is not matte and drying like the vive ones are so i really like this color there are a couple of other colors like this from l'oreal that come quite highly recommended so i might check those out as well and the good thing with l'oreal lipsticks is the price point as well they are really really affordable however the lip item i'm going to be applying and going to be sorting out this is from mac as well and this is the Powder Kiss Velvet Blur Slim Stick. I still have it in my packaging. I've only applied it once. It arrived halfway through last week, I think, and I applied it when I got it, loved it, and was like, yes, I need to include that in a video. This is the packaging. I love that it's really sleek. It's really sophisticated looking. It is a little bit heavy, so you are gonna notice it. Great for traveling, great for shoving in your handbag because it doesn't take up much room at all. And I've tried the Powder Kiss lipsticks before, love the formulation of it, great pigment, super, super comfortable, but it was in a blue base red and I didn't like it. This is the one I picked up in the shade Sweet Cinnamon. Actually, you know what, I think I'm just going to apply it because I am aware that I do look a little bit ridiculous right now, so just give me a sec. Do you see how easy that was? I just... I love it. I really, really love this colour. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Now, I know I've said when I was talking about the lip liners that I'm not really a red lip kind of person, but when it's an orangey red like this, I just love it. There's something about an orange red that I love. Now, I first came across this colour when I was looking through my Instagram and somebody that I was following had on a red lip and she tagged what lip colour it was and it was this and it looked so beautiful on her, I'll, I'll link her YouTube channel down below, that I, I just had to buy it immediately. I thought, that looks beautiful on you, I think I can get away with wearing that, I need it. And yeah, I just love it, I'm just so obsessed with this colour, I just think it's a beautiful, beautiful orange base red but also really wearable as well I don't feel like it's wearing me I don't feel like it's really intense and really heavy and I look like a clown and now I get quite self-conscious when I wear a red lipstick and I'm not feeling self-conscious in this the formulation of this is really lovely as well you saw how easy that was to apply it's so hydrating it feels like I've hardly got anything on my lips it doesn't feel drying at all now this isn't completely matte and it isn't completely transfer proof so when I eat when I drink this will transfer this will come off so I do have to kind of keep on top of this lipstick throughout the day but I just love it I'm so super happy I bought this I think this is arguably my favorite purchase of the year I, I love it I can't say that enough and then lastly I've got some lip glosses to talk about I bought these a few months ago because my friend really raved about these lip glosses and, and recommended them to me and they're by Kiko these are the 3d Hydra lip glosses I've got three of them I've got the shade 19, which is like a nudey pink brown, a lovely wearable everyday colour. I can wear these over the top of a more brown lip colour or a more pink colour, so it is a little bit versatile, all on its own. I've got this colour, which is probably better suited to like spring and summer. This is in the shade 4, and this is a little bit glittery, but it's not cheap looking, and I don't usually like glitter in my lip colours, but with this it works. This is a very light pinky peach coral, beautiful shade. And then I've got a clear, this is 01 clear lip gloss and I love this lip gloss in particular, I love all of them, but I love this clear one because it is just clear. There is no glitter in it, there's no 
no like pearlescence within it. It is a pure clear lip gloss. And all of these lip glosses are beautiful. They feel so comfortable and so hydrating on the lips, but they're not very sticky or very tacky or gloopy or very thick. The formulation is very thin, so you get a nice thin layer of lip gloss. They are high sheen as well, so they're a bit of like a glass-like effect. Beautiful lip glosses. I would highly, highly recommend these, and they come in loads of different shades as well. It was actually quite difficult to know which shades to buy. I think I, I bought these on like a three for two offer. I knew I wanted the clear. I thought number 19, that pinky brown, would be a great everyday shade to wear. And I just thought something a little bit more fun for the spring and summer, so like that glittery coral. But love these, glad I've bought these. These are, I think, again, another one of my favourite purchases this year. So those are all of the makeup items that I've bought this year. So if you've tried any of them, please let me know, especially if you've tried the ones that I have applied. If you've tried this MAC lipstick as well, please also let me know your thoughts and whether you love it as much as I do. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you found that interesting and enjoyable. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so, it would be lovely to have you here. And I'll see you again soon for my next one. Bye.